will make him forget about yeah. the pain that he's yep. experiencing with his breakup. Yeah, he needs a Band-Aid and it's you. Yes. Women are not Don't Band-Aids. Don't be stupid. Women are people. Fuckers, how you doing? Where you been? Welcome to another episode of Guys We Fucked. It's the Anti-Slut Shaming Podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Should oh. we have moved this camera or? No, the camera's fine. Uh, oh, yeah. That's the third one that's not on it. Well, I'm saying like so we could get two shots. Okay. Anyway, that's fine. Um, I was told. Yeah, the, the wide one is, shot. The wide is the one. The close up was at a weird well, oh, weird. okay. Because I was like, I, I was we technically bad. should still have both, but okay. Okay. That's for fine. the, yeah, we're going to talk about that later. Um, okay. So guys, if you want a little behind the scenes action, behind the scenes. you know, uh, if you want to write us an email, you know what, it, you know what time it is. It's sorry about last night show at gmail.com. Today's subject line to move in or to not move in. That is the question. Probably hey. not. <laughs> <laughs> I like to answer them ahead of the time and then see if I was right. <laughs> hey, Christina and Corinne. So here's the deal. I'm a 26-year-old woman. I've known this guy, 33 years old, for about a year. We actually just started dating three months ago. No. Yeah, don't fucking move in. Uh, now, the backstory is that he got out of a pretty serious five-year-long relationship about six months ago. Oh, my God. So three months into his new found singledom, you guys started dating. Jesus got it. Christ. After that, he decided to move to a small town not too far from where I live, and he's staying with his mom. He's having a full nervous breakdown. Yes, he is. <laughs> now, here's where it gets tricky. He's really keen on moving in with me at my place, where I live with my brother. Yeah, because he wants to get out of his mom's house. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> the writing's on the wall, girl. You just got to look at it. Is I'll, it love or is he living with his mom? <laughs> he's probably just because he's living with his mom. I'll admit I've been a bit all over the place with my decision on this. Sometimes I've said yes. And then other times I've pulled back and said no. Here's the thing. I really think we can make it work living together. But I can't help feeling like it's just too soon. Fuck, Houston, that means it fucking is. That's your gut telling you what to do. I also like how she's like, she's like a Carrie Bradshaw. She's like, I just can't help but think it's too soon. It's I like, can't help but look wonder. at a calendar. It's yeah. too soon. We don't have to have feelings. We literally can look at a calendar and go, whoops. You could count the amount of days you've been together in under a minute. You're, you, yeah, stop. I mean, I've, he just got out of a serious long-term relationship earlier this year. There we go. Yes. One major factor. Okay. <laughs> Putting two and two together, girl. And we've finally been officially, and we've only been officially together for three months. Again, another important thing to consider. There we go. Recently, though, I've finally made up my mind. Everything's about it. recent in your relationship because you've only been together for three months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had an honest talk with him and told him that I think we should hold off on moving in together for now, especially seeing that I am already living with my brother. I let him have a room until he gets back on his feet. Um, oh, she, oh, she's your like brother, a homeless shelter for men. <laughs> yeah, but guess what? He's very angry with me. Ooh, that's a red flag. And giving me the silent treatment. Ooh, two red flags. And you know what, girl? That's a gift. That's okay? so funny. It's Scroll back gift. to the part where it, she was like, I really think we can make a living together work. <laughs> please know that these red flags are a gift and not a challenge. Yeah. Okay, it's not a fucking challenge, all right? He's accusing me of toying with his feelings and playing mind games. Oh, okay, I love this, that. This guy has the potential to be very emotionally abusive then. Um, I don't, I'm not saying that he is, but I'm saying if he was, I wouldn't be like, what? He's accusing me of toying <laughs> with his feelings and playing mind games because I've been back and forth on the whole idea. I mean, that's what happens when you're trying to make a decision. Correct. The thing is, my mind is set now. I really do believe the waiting before before taking such a big step makes more sense. I even suggested that he could find his own place nearby so we can still see each other all the time, but he's not really into that idea, even though he can totally afford it. Okay, this guy sucks. I do not like him. I do I don't not even like think him. he likes you. I think he just wanted to I stay think in a place yeah, yeah, yeah. that wasn't his mom's place. He's upset because he was really looking forward to living together. No Is man's that five? excited. No Is man's that excited. Five? Stop. And now things have taken a turn, but come on, isn't it okay for me to change my mind? Yes. Always. I'd really appreciate your take on this. Am I being unreasonable here? I'm a little alarmed that you cannot see yeah. what red flags are swimming with this guy. What the fuck? You just started dating and he's mad at you for changing your mind, which is something that people do. You were in the middle of making a decision. 
This guy better be so fucking hot. I don't even care if he's hot, dude. This guy better be so hot. He better eat you out for like eight hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever you like getting done. Fingering. Some people are more finger people. Cleaning. Yeah, he should cook for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus Christ. This is insane. This guy... If you were my friend, I would I would say something. Maybe. I would say, I would say something to you and be like, dude, I can't get out of this relationship. Need, this guy's having a full breakdown. He needs to mourn the old relationship. He's thirty three. It's too soon. He's living with his mom. He's immature for thirty three. All signs point to now. I Everything think, about this is a now. I'm a, and I'm gonna guess. And we'll never know, but I'm gonna guess that the reason why he's so eager to move in with you so quickly is because. Um, it will make him forget about yeah. the pain that he's yep. experiencing with his breakup. Yeah, he needs a band aid, and it's you. Yes. Women are not Don't band-aids. Be stupid. Women are people. Okay? So we're going to not be a dumb bitch, and we're going to walk away, and we're going to say sayonara. I cannot re- reinforce the fact enough that you guys need to read back the emails before you press send on them. Write them out. It's cathartic. And then read, read them back <laughs> and pretend you're not you reading your own email you should, yeah, and think what I think this person is a dumb bitch. And I gotta be honest, you're going to say oh, yes. Well, yeah. Almost 99% of the time. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and honestly too, you're the, I've noticed people are asking the wrong questions. I, I, I would be more concerned yeah. with why, why you didn't like the fact that he's rushing you to make a very important decision and acting like you don't have the right to like, mm-hmm. to, 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 to kind of reason it out out loud with yourself and change your mind. That's crazy. That's I wouldn't, if a friend was like that towards me with a decision, even if it had nothing to do with them, I'd be like, get off my dick, dude. I would also want to know why moving in at this point was even on the table like, did he just bring it up out of thin air? Hey, yeah. here's a fun idea. Yeah. I need a place to live. Where the fuck did Truly. this even come from? Can he afford to live on his own? I don't know. Because the thing is, I'm glad that the 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 people that are writing in that have a problem that's very, we would consider, we would label it right away, dumb bitch, dumb bitch, dumb bitch. Mm-hmm. I want you to keep writing in because there's, there's a, still a disconnect happening. But it's not that... Am I being a dumb bitch or not? You know, you know you are. The question is, and what I'd way rather help you figure out is why, like what's going on here? What are you not seeing? Like, why are you kind of guarding the truth? Does it relate to a something in your life that was old, like an old thing? I don't know. It's but so like, funny to be like, it's not whether or not you are stupid. It's like, why, why are, are you? Stupid? Well, yeah, but that's, <laughs> but to me, I've, I've, you the know. The why is always more interesting. Yes. And I've been on the self-help bandwagon for a really long time. And the thing is like, I've danced, I've witnessed myself dance around what the actual issue at, at hand was. And so it's always the why. And it's always, I think that's the safest bet is like dive into yourself internally. You know, we get a lot of emails about why is he doing this? Why is he doing this? Why are you taking it? Yeah. I mean, that's why the, the guy winch, uh, break up at, uh, you know, uh, advice of making the list of the reasons why the person's not good for you is so simple yet so genius. And Mm. I even like not in a, in a listicle sort of way, but I uh, use that kind of tactic with myself all the time when I'm missing someone that I shouldn't miss or thinking about something that I shouldn't think about. I literally just sit and then, then go over all the terrible things that that person has done to me, the ways that they, in which they've made me feel that were negative. And I really am able to talk myself out of it like quite, quite easily and be like, can you imagine, I actually think of this like, 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 can you imagine if someone wrote into the show with all these things Yes, how, yeah, that you would, you would mock them, yes. you would mock them. Yes. And then I just mock myself. And then there you go. Healed. Healed, baby. Healed. Um, guys, come see us live. Okay. We're going to be at Vegas at the end of the month, the end of September. I'm going to be uh, headlining Springville, Utah, October 20th, 21st, Bridgeport, Connecticut, November 2nd through 4th. Chicago, November 10th and 11th. Nashville, one night only, November 12th. Fucking very excited for that. And then Springfield, Missouri, November 16th through the 18th. And uh, as always, I have a Patreon where for five bucks a month you could sign up and uh, well, actually it might be 10 at this point by the time this is coming out, depending. Well, go on and see. It's patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. Uh, I host a Zoom gr- group lamenting session and we post. I post the audio uh, afterwards so if you can't make it, you can listen to it. It's very interesting and it's really nice to have um, good conversations where people kind of like have in my experience with these Zooms, they've already done the analysis on themselves and we get to we get to the why is this happening? You know, like what is the roots of these things and exploring that. So it's really it's a really nice place to uh, figure out your shit. 
And then, of course, you can listen to me on my solo podcast, Without a Country. Uh, it's political. It is social issues. It's a little bit of pop culture. Super fun. And we do some, like, random interviews. Like, we, I interviewed this guy who was trying to make math religious, which was fascinating. Uh, I interviewed one of Chris D'Elia's survivors, victims, depends on how you want to say it. I mean, I think a lot of times she would say victim. Um, so just some really interesting kind of like uh, off the beaten path interviews on that show as well. You can subscribe on YouTube at Without a Country and make sure to follow Without a Country podcast on Instagram. And then Washington, D.C. I'm stacking up some dates for 2024 right now. That's the first one. I'm headlining D.C. Comedy Loft February 29th through March 2nd. Super excited for that. Always have a great time in D.C. That ticket link is already available at CorinneFisher.com or in the link tree link in my bio on Instagram, which is at philanthropy gal. Make sure you're following us on all on social media. Again, you know, everyone asks, you know, how can we help the podcast? Especially if you're not subscribed to Luminary, like we totally get it. Everyone doesn't have the funds to do that, but a free, incredible way to help is to make sure you're following us all on social media. I'm at philanthropy gal. I'm at Christina Hutch. And I'm at Mike Coscarelli. And of course, uh, subscribing to our YouTube page, whether or not that's how you consume the podcast. It's uh, youtube.com slash guys. We fucked without the you and fucked. And there's also a clips channel that you will see featured on the main YouTube page. Again, just a quick click and it helps us so much. And we appreciate you for doing so. Yeah. How so, you doing? I'm good. Uh, you said you had a little, we, ne- we never got to your, the thing that, oh, from yeah. the other episode that you were going to share. Yeah. It was just, a, just like a thing that I observed. Um, with it being so hot out. Um, Is I, that hot enough for you? <laughs> one of our most genius words. Classic. Um, yeah, you got to say <laughs> YouTube.com, baby. Um, uh, I noticed that I get really like horny when I wear like slutty clothes and you know the word slutty to me when it applies to something I'm wearing is like ooh a little bit of cleavage oh I like, was I was impressed that you're, you're that the, I could even see the line in your boobs today yeah I, that never comes out that never makes an appearance I'm getting more comfortable wearing less clothing in public I don't know why I still don't know why I wasn't comfortable with it but like I'm really leaning in hard. Well, you explained it kind of in the past as like because you got so much attention from a young age because you developed early. Yeah, yeah. But I, I look, I think about like the more more recent times that I'm like no, and I'm like what? when I really interrogated it, I'm, or maybe that just that the effect that that had on me has just disintegrated. Right. And now it's the new it's the new me, the new you with a little slit, some titties, a booby. Yeah. There's always a slip between my boobs, but it's just blank space. <laughs> but I've got a blank space, baby. So look, how much I have, look how much I have would have to push them to even create such a thing. So wait, you can... <laughs> and I'll write your name. You can run. <laughs> you can do jumping jacks braless and it don't hurt. No, it does. It still hurts. It still hurts. Yes, I absolutely cannot work out without a bra. It's very oh, painful. Okay. No. Oh, okay. Because it's fucking... God, no. I have to hold my boobs when I run and I wear a sports bra. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no. I can't That's why I roll a bra. Gliding, baby. Gliding. I never, the only time I wear a bra these days is when I'm at the gym. There was, um, I noticed too, and I assumed it was because I'm not in my 20s anymore, getting like hit on in public or like just, just hit on by randos walking down the street. It's kind of stopped for a while. And I was like, no, oh, that's interesting. I was just observing it. And I'm like, that's weird because I still feel like sexy and hot. I'm like, I think I look great. Um, and then it just started back up again. And I'm like, literally no idea why. Oh, there's really? Nothing I'm doing, there's nothing different. Interesting. I'm just, yeah. It's like, like it's, you know how this thing will happen like when one of your ex texts you out of the blue, like three of them do. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, it's like that. Like when it rains, it pours. I'm like, God damn, I really got my groove back or something. I didn't even think I, I didn't lose it, but like. Yeah, for well, some in reason, summer, I'm being it's always different. worse. I feel like I mean, I'm like, I like, I go on my long ass uh, Sunday walks with my dog, and I mean, just ri- like ridiculous. And I, I'm never wearing makeup during these walks. Uh, so. See, I hate that. I fucking hate that because I'm like, are you? See- you're joking. Stop. Well, Let's I stop did being look good though, but my skin's been like very good, and I plus like mm. I put my nose ring back in, and then my oh. hair is like really good. So I'm like, I was like, yeah. looking, I'm like, I really don't look cute. honestly need makeup, but yeah, I was like wearing um. Like a, like a, you know, like those onesies that are popular now, but like a, the athletic onesies. So I have like a short, like onesie yeah. that I just, uh, and I was like, I'm just gonna, you know, go around the city. And I wasn't doing it to get it. I fucking hate when I get attention, actually. Um, I just like going around and spending time with my dog and bonding with him. Yeah. But I was like, oh yeah, this is out of, this is out of control. See, I guess, um, 
I, the, the hitting on that's happening with me is not, uh, annoying. It's re- like this other guy. This oh, I guy, find it all to be annoying. This guy, <laughs> this really cute skateboarder guy yeah. fucking skated up to me and was like, Hey, I just think he was from Ireland and he was trying to tell me all about Ireland. Oh, and I was you, like, these Irish men love you, Christina. You're an Irish magnet. No, <laughs> good for me though. Irish guys are hot, but, um, and they're so like charming. Um, and he was really cute and he was being very charming. He's trying to tell me about Ireland. I'm like, yeah, I, I was waiting for him to finish so I could say like, yeah, my boyfriend's from Dublin. Um, and he, but like the hitting on that's happening with me is like quality. Mm, that's good. So I'm like, thank God. You I'm know? only interested in, in, in a men under 30 and there, there's a lot of yeah. that in the East Village, which is good. And nice. I, but then I, I'm like, how do you even like, they have to approach you though. Cause I'm like, I can't look like a fucking crazy lady right you should just have a t-shirt that says come over oh and my stand-up i always i always make it very clear that i love younger guys good yeah 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 make it it very clear and a lot of times they will come up to me after the show because i said that but i'm like i know i have to really let them know yeah really just everyone walking around the neighborhood looking like they're an extra from euphoria i'm like Mm. this is great (laughs) yeah get that those gaunt abs over here yeah oh my god yeah they all look like that guy the bad the bad boy who also isn't he's not american he's he australian or something bad boy the the bad boy from euphoria the one whose dad is like hot oh my god that that guy's guy's so so hot hot. it's It's actually it's unfair i saw a guy who looked just like him on the subway and i i was like i was it now i very i very very rarely like stare at men and I could not stop looking at this guy. I was Dude. like, this guy is so hot. I don't even care if he sees me staring at him. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Insane. It's so rare for a woman to have the opportunity oh to be blown away by God. a man's looks. Yeah. And it's and honestly, like New York, it's happened to me more in New York than any other city, but I can count on one fucking hand the amount of times that it's happened. Yeah, it's um, very rare that I'm just like, that I actually can't control it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, I could always control it, but that I like not making an effort to control right. it. Right, yes. It's like me with firefighters. Like when they're, when it's a hot one, I fuck, I'll cap call them. I don't give a fuck. I'll <laughs> ask them what they're doing later. Yeah, also, I'm, I don't even intend to follow up with any of that. I'm just like, it's like, I can't, I act like a dude. The firefighters want attention too. They're always hanging out with yeah, their, d- with the door open. Oh yeah. Just like yeah, yeah, doing yeah. little exercises. One time uh, recently they just had um, a, uh, like a, a saw an electric saw chainsaw <laughs> and they were just like, like sketch. and they were just a like going chainsaw. like this they were just like going like this in front of that firehouse for no Saw-ing reason nothing. and I was like well because they, they have to do their little exercises to practice for the fire <laughs> right. oh. that's my favorite part oh yeah they're you always, might as well do them on the fucking curb they're always get... practicing sometimes they take the ladder out and they practice climbing oh, to the roof wow, they're always very great. busy you know that's awesome it, I but, fucking love that yeah and then I also always walk Alfred by but then they all they started this thing where they have a box of milk bones for all the neighborhood dogs oh. And oh. now Alfred acts like a hot girl when he walks by. He's always like, because he'll always like kind of peer in like, am I getting a milk bone or not? Wow. And he's on a very strict diet Sassy and I don't even boy. allow him to eat. So I would never feed my a milk bone. What is he, a peasant? I would never feel, it's like the <laughs> cheapest dog food. But I, I, I love them so much and it brings the firefighters and Alfred such joy that I let Alfred eat a milk bone from the firefighters. That's very sweet. Even though I feel like, I mean, to me, I, that's the equivalent of like every now and then you let your kid have McDonald's. Sure. That's Alfred's McDonald's is yeah, a yeah, yeah. milk bone. Yeah. What's Ugh. even in that? Come on. Air. <laughs> I, I, wish, I wish it was just air. Swamp. It's probably just like ground up like chicken bones or something. Yeah. Who God knows? Man. You who, I don't know what's in there. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. I, what did I, what did I read on here? Oh, um, Mm. I'm excited for summer to be over though, because goddamn this heat. Damn. Oh, isn't it awful? It's just it's hard to breathe. It's hard to breathe. Oh yeah, well like that- it's, when it gets this hot, it, which we've been lucky. But man, when I was in Dallas, Texas, we should we should we really got to bust climate deniers to Dallas, Texas, because Jesus Christ, it felt like the wind burned my skin. Uh huh. It was 106 degrees. It was so hot. I was like, it made me angry. Damn. I could have napped for like. Hours and hours and hours after doing a five minute walk outside. It's wild. The wind burning your skin. Well, I was thinking about that. I'm like, there's always a point in the summer, and we are at that now where I'm just like, I'm good. I'm yeah. over this. Uh, this one, August, I'm, one of the worst months, man. I'm just, yeah. I, just sweaty and like just, my skin, like, and my hair can't get a fuck, catch a fucking break. It's just, it's just, it just go, okay, we get, we get it. It's hot. I'm too, yeah. it's, it's, too, it's too much. And uh, then I just start thinking about like, you know, what Lana Del Rey was really onto something with summertime sadness. I'm like, because overall, I've been like very, 
happy. But mm-hmm. then I'm like, there is a point in summer where it almost feels like summer and is and everyone having a good time in summer is like mocking you. Yes. And oh. you're like, I get it. You're like, we all l- love summer so much. And also I just like, I know that like anyone, anytime someone says summer's their f- favorite season, I'm like, we're not gonna get along. Yep. Like we just see things differently. Like, yeah. oh, yesterday uh, I had my first pumpkin spice latte of the season. Which, Already? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like they, fucking CVS putting out Halloween candy. Yeah, what the no, fuck? Give no. us a second. No, August is Halloween time and I'm all for rushing it because I'm like, I would like that season to last three uh, months. And I, fe- they've, you know, found out how lucrative it is. So they've started mm. doing it. And normally I am very good about like saving it till it's like the, you know, till September. But I was like, no, we're doing it today. Just lean in, and yeah. I did it yesterday and it was great. It's like the most basic bitch thing about me. And I don't care. It is, but it's so delicious. It's fucking. Who doesn't like a pumpkin spice latte? It tastes latte? so good. Yeah, and you're insane if you. It I get. I get so making good. fun of liking it for sure. Hundred so percent. I'm right there with you as I'm in line for it. But it's you can't. So tasty. You can't drink that shit and tell me that doesn't taste like liquid gold. Oh my it tastes god. Tastes like an orgasm in your mouth. It's fucking great. It's really good. Hopped around drinking. It, it, it's drinking a pumpkin spice latte in nice. shorts. Great. Nice. Incredible. Nice. Incredible. Michael, who who are we dating these days? Uh. I have I have a little thing that's happening, but it's not. Uh, oh I'm trying to not get too ahead of myself. Okay. Wise, trying um, not to get too excited about it. Yeah, I have told Corinne about it, but it's that's uh, good. Yeah, she's nice. She's older than I am. One of the first times I've I've kind of experimented with somebody. I thought that's you older. had oh well, to date. I, to I date, know you've had yeah. relations with. Yes, I've. Wait, I've how many with years older? older? Women. Not much older. Like I think she's only like a year older. Oh, oh, oh okay. she's, Jesus you know, Christ. it's it is different. Usually, she's a geriatric. I, no, I didn't say that. I, I feel like one to two years just, is like basically like not a difference. Yeah, I, I wouldn't not, even say older. I would just yeah. say it's different than what I've used, what I've typically dated. Usually, yeah. the, it's the substantially range substantially younger. Not substantially younger. I mean, the, so the, much younger. The range is like usually twenty eight. Uh, 27, maybe 27 to like around my age. So right, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, that's not fair. that crazy. But um, yeah, but we'll see what happens. It's still very, we're not like, we're definitely not official and we're not like, we've just been hanging out. It feels cool. cool. Feel each other out. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Nice. I, it's going in a good direction, but it's not like. Right, so I not, haven't heard any frantic, like, yeah, I haven't got received any frantic calls. So I like that. I, I really am a little too busy to like date. Ooh, that's the attitude. Ooh, I'm getting you know? horny. That's the, that's the attitude Uh-oh. that the ladies <laughs> like. <laughs> it's just like starting a business is is a nightmare. Keep uh, talking. If I would have known that it was going to be this much work and this stressful in January when I started my venture, I would, probably wouldn't have done hey, it. It's, it's like Beyonce with Coachella. Yeah. Fuck it's, she's like, I'll never do that again. It's so, it's a lot of work. <laughs> well, and I, we, we talk about it all the time that we, that, like we're running, running your own business is the worst thing you can do yourself. You will be your meanest boss. Yes. Of course. Yeah. It's brutal. And there's always something that you could be doing at yes. all times. All yeah. times. And then there's so. all, even just like you're, you're sitting around, like, like if it's not worth, we're not recording this, if I'm recording somebody else, I get a text that something else isn't done. Yeah. Like you're just constantly, uh, trying to put out fires at all hours of the day. And I would, I will say that so far with the, so I haven't been dating in terms of like going out with a bunch of different people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's also the weird thing about starting to, to kind of like somebody you're, you're in this position where like, I haven't been in a relationship in so long, you kind of have to, like, I'm in the process of reprogramming in my usual instincts. Priorities. Like, yeah, like if, if I have any downtime, a lot of times I, it's just like a knee-jerk reaction sometimes to pick up the phone and check Hinge. Totally, and totally, it's like, totally. I'm not actively on Hinge looking to meet anybody else. It, it's just kind of like this thing that I have to stop myself from doing because I've done it for two and a half, almost three years now, you know? Yeah. So it's this weird transition period where it's like, like I, I don't have a girlfriend yet, but I'm not like, it's not like I wouldn't, if the situation was right, like potentially still hook up with somebody because we're not quite there yet and I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I hope she's listening to this. Me too. I, I, I'm talking, but by the time she hears this, it'll also be weeks from <laughs> from when we recorded it. But Hot. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. this weird thing. You're like reshifting your... Something I saved. Um, uh, I have like guys who fucked intro topics sure. uh, mm-hmm. in my Instagram. And uh, w- this this quote was really interesting. Um, it's it's not nothing profound. It's very simplistic, but it lends itself to what you're talking about. Mike. in a relationship, you can't just do what you want. You always have to think about the other person. And that's what people don't understand. Oh, I understand it. That's why I try to stay out of them. Right, right, right. And there <laughs> is I like understand a- it all too well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember it all too well.
to shift your priority. Cause I remember Mike, like you were very, like you really took dating seriously. Yeah. And then after you, your business, like having your own business that you're excited about, like regardless of how stressful it is and like mind numbing at times, you know, that's, that's where you're putting your energy. Yeah. Um, well, and it's the weird thing in now is like, like I get so stressed out during the week that there are times where on the weekend that there's still part of my brain that's like, all right, it's bender time. Like it's time to like go totally, out, yeah, yeah. like meet a girl, get drinks, get like, fucked. yeah, like have a crazy weekend or whatever, because oh, it's I like loved those nights. those finance guys this is the perfect example. Those uh, dudes yeah. push it to the limit during the week yeah. and then they're just like, they oh, like lose it. And then Mikey comes in and sweeps up the lady. No, it's just kind of, it's just this thing where it's like, I'm reprogramming like how I do. Cause the, the, yeah. the, we've, the You're working person, harder and you're playing harder. I'm working harder and I'm playing harder, but I also you're am in a, a phase of my life where like the times that I have hung out with this person, we've kind of gone back and forth with like going out to dinner and like hanging out on the couch yeah. and, and like we're finding that balance I think already. And the times that like I get to hang out with her on a Tuesday or something when there's, when I, I'm like, all right, I have, I have four hours tonight where I don't have to like record or edit or anything. Like let's hang out. Let's watch a movie. It feels really good. So yeah, yeah. I'm trying to embrace the fact, and I do think that this person is into me, which is a newer I, well, thing. I would, what? No. Well, we've talked about this before. I, t- you I like always date unavailable women. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, there's oh, part of that doesn't that's mean they don't like that. you though. No, but right. unavailable means a lot of things. They don't see like a whole future with yeah, you. Perhaps. Right? They're not in. So I think I'm just trying to let myself, um, like I'm trying to give in to the ease of that. Of some like like of I've, not this, having to stress about someone. Yeah, of just like like somebody that that feel that is like kind of letting it be known that she's into me. Uh, and fascinating. I yeah. think that there's like something that's really nice about it. That, that now there's like a connection with somebody that <laughs> this like is hilarious. Asks me about my day. Oh yeah. my god! I will like, never oh, understand. Uh, I know it is so common, and so many people write us in. But I, it is so, you guys, it is so hard for me to grasp the interest in someone not interested okay, in so you. I'll explain. I will never get over this. I, I will tell like, you. I mean, I mean, it's just not something that you would you would be uh, ignited by. But for some people, it's fuel. It's weird because it's a chance to prove that you are worth love. No, no, no. I conceptually understand why people are doing it. I, I, it still just doesn't. I go, why would we do this to her? It's, it feels so self-destructive. Oh, of course it, feels it is. So yeah, very, wild. It, very like, self-destructive. It feels wildly self-destructive to a point where like, I, wow, God yeah. damn. And like everything that you're like, all, all the bonding that's happening allegedly in that type of relationship is fake. Like it's not actually, it's like all in your head. It's wild. Yeah. It's wild. It's Fuck. wild. But man, it's a weird, I don't want to say motivator. That's not the right word. But like <laughs> I have gotten so into men who were not into me in the yeah, past. That yeah. like, And I think back, I'm like, what the fuck? Because when they yeah. don't like you, you f- and then they, they kind of give you enough, you feel like you've it's been bread. chosen. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the breadcrumbing, the, yes. the breadcrumbing. But, right. yes. but, but you, the, another addicting. option is someone who chose you outright without it, you begging for it. That's not as fun. That's like no, it's actually more fun. I assure you. Well, right, because it's a it's like it's a healthy bond. Because you don't you don't feel you don't feel like you had to convince someone they just liked you the whole time. Well, and uh, yeah, and I think somebody who's constantly going after unavailability is is just you. They you your notion your like ground zero level of how to be is too much. It's too much work. It's too much uh, grinding of the gears. That but it's right. like it's what you accept as the level zero, whereas the actual level zero is just calm and re- re- reciprocated mm-hmm. and we go at whatever pace we're going to go at and there's no clinging and there's no because like even if you convince some so even if i was like for instance like even if i like took to, uh, did the undertaking of ha- trying to get someone to like me mm-hmm. and i ultimately got them to like me how how do you not constantly think wow i had to do so much work to get this person to like me why are why what was what what was so special about them that i had to earn their See, that's love the reasoning in such that, a way that's the reasoning that doesn't go through your head that should huh? that's not even a thought like uh, like the time i'm thinking of the times that i've gone after somebody who wasn't available it what i didn't ask myself that question which is why i kept doing it oh yeah cuz I, I would just then i would just honestly be like pissed <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always even if I uh, even, even if I like uh, were, was able to achieve it, I would just be like, "The fuck did I do that? Yeah, why for? was all that all that work? Fuck for this what? person. Who the fuck is this person?" Yeah, I feel like as a guy, though, in my personal experience and my perspective, I think that that's like a common thing. I think you're constantly, for men to do that or yeah, for women to for do men, that. I think you're constantly like baiting the hook. 
And I think that like men it's are- It's part of the dance of courting for sure, or just, like flirting. Sometimes. I've never had, I, anytime a man has done, that has tried so hard to get me to like him, I lose respect for him immediately. Anytime it's mm. actually worked, it's been like pretty equal. Yeah. Feeling for, for one another. Well, yeah, I guess maybe that's the key. I mean, obviously all the situations that <laughs> I'm talking about, they haven't, right. nothing's worked. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> So yeah. I, maybe you're right, but. There's no, any of the instances where it's, yeah, where it's worked and it was never one person way more than the other person. Mm. I mean, I think there was times when like it seesawed a, a, a little bit. I think it's like very hard for it to always be exactly even. That's like almost impossible. There will yeah. always be phases where one person likes the other person a little bit more, but it was never like any of the ones that worked was never like wildly off center mm. like that. Yeah. Cause I would just, I mean, I would either, I would either be annoyed by the person trying too hard yes. or I would be like, the fuck am I? Like I would, I, the other one instance just would never happen to be honest. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, man. Very fascinating people, by this. People get up, get absorbed in their own mind. Well, their I'm excited mind is to like try something new. I'm That's excited great. for you. <laughs> yeah, me too. You deserve it, Mikey. It, uh, and I hope it feels good. It does. I'm glad it feels good because you said it like does feel good. I'm like, that's awesome. I think that's a really healthy sign. I'm trying. As long like as it, a, yeah, I just worry that it feels boring. You know, that's like that. Right. That I think is the thing that you have to worry about. Yeah, like, yeah. That like if you start sensing that it feels boring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to be cognizant of it. And again, I'm not trying to get too far ahead of myself. Like we're, I think the end of the summer is a busy time to kind of meet somebody. Mm. Um, even though we're like, like cuffing season comes up quick. Yeah. But I think cuffing that season. it's just, yeah. Cause like everybody for the, for like all of August, it seems like everybody's like out of town on the weekends, like, like kind of like getting the last breath of summer and then September hits and then people are, I think are like more, so I told you at the beginning of the summer, I thought this year that like, um, the apps were going to be like, like everybody's single, everybody's out, whatever. I don't think anybody is even really just like, like this was the first summer that I lived in the city where it just felt like nobody was here. Everybody mm. was constantly either on trips or in the Hamptons or at the shore or something. And, um, it's just weird. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm in my thirties now. People are getting older, but I just thought that based off of last summer and the summer before I was like, summer's going to be popping. Like there's yeah. going to be people that are just like open for business. Yeah. And it just like, wasn't the case. So, um, I don't know. It's just a weird thing. I'm, I'm trying to just like, like keep it, at a good pace and take it slow enough where it's like, you know, we've been seeing each other for, I guess it's almost a month now. So, but you know, you're feeling it out once a week, maybe like here and there. So yeah. it's not like we're, we're not like, it's not too intense yet, but I, I, I do dig her and, and oh. hopefully this will be like something. What That's are you nice at? that you said dig? It just made me laugh. I'm an old man. But. <laughs> ah, I, say I do dig her. I dig her. <laughs> <laughs> She's radical. Let's see what's up. Oh my God. You know who else we dig? Our freaking guest. Yes, what a beautiful that was so smooth she's a she's a legendary uh she's a legend in the adult entertainment industry as a performer as a director as a writer she founded the website burningangel.com and she's the host of the new podcast just the tips ladies and gentlemen please welcome to the show joanna angel, joanna angel. 